Well, welcome to the video to show you how to use the Google Earth Flight Simulator on the desktop version of Google Earth. It does not work in the mobile version of Google Earth. I'm Frank Taylor and the publisher of the Google Earth blog, and I'm actually part of the reason there is a flight simulator in Google Earth. Back in 2006, before Google Earth had a flight simulator, I created a YouTube video showing people how you could roughly fly Google Earth like an airplane using a joystick. Google was so impressed with the video, they decided to build a flight simulator into the application. So in 2007, after they introduced the new flight simulator, I created a video to show people how to use it with tips on how to fly the airplane. Well, it's long overdue for an update to that video. Back then, YouTube could only display a 480 pixel resolution video. And now it can do 4,000K or 4K resolution videos. And the typical PC today is far faster computer graphics. So Google Earth Flight Simulator runs awesome. And the final reason is that the imagery and 3D data in Google Earth is vastly better than it was back in 2007 or even a year ago. So this video is running at 2560 by 1440 resolution at 60 frames a second on a Windows 8 PC with a fast graphics card. It has max graphics settings, including anti-aliasing. I'll be creating another video tutorial on how to set up Google Earth to, for these settings. Even with the default settings on your computer, a current desktop or laptop can run the flight simulator remarkably well. Google Earth hasn't been updated for over two years but computers have only gotten faster and better with more memory. And internet connections are usually much better today. So to start, I'm going to take us to the Logan Airport in Boston, Massachusetts. So we'll click up here in the upper left and type Logan Airport. Oops. Let's try that again. And the reason I picked this airport is that it's near the city of Boston, which Google has recently updated with really high quality 3D models. They generated these 3D models by flying lots and lots of airplane flights over the city, capturing lots of photography, and then using their computers to generate using a technique called photogrammetry 3D models. Now, in order to see the 3D models, you have to turn on the 3D buildings layer in Google Earth and then you'll see like the city in the background. So I've chosen this runway where you can see the city <clears throat> and I've put us down on the end of the runway so that when we start the simulator, we'll be here. So um, let's begin the tutorial. You need to make sure you're in full screen mode by either clicking in your window or by hitting the F11 key on your keyboard. Next, make sure, like I said, the 3D buildings is turned on then go to the Tools menu and select Enter Flight Simulator. You'll get this window and you have a choice of flying either an F-16 jet or an SR-22 propeller plane. I recommend the slower plane, the propeller plane, because it'll be easier, especially if it's your first time to fly in the flight simulator, to fly. So click on that, then make sure you have Current View selected as your start position. That way we'll be here at the runway when we start. Then say Start Flight. The first thing you'll notice is you go widescreen and then you have the HUD display. This is a in set of instruments that help you fly the plane. I'm not going to go into detail on how it does that at this point, but it'll become obvious as you're flying what some of them do. You can turn on and off the HUD by hitting the H key, but I recommend having it on, especially at the beginning, to help guide you with flying. Okay, on the lower left you'll see at the most lower left is this little indicator. When this triangle is at the top, you have full throttle. When it's at the bottom, you have no throttle, so you're not moving. So, uh, or at least you have no thrust. Um, and when you're going down the runway, you will not be using the flight controls, but the brakes to drive the plane. The brakes are run by using two keys on the keyboard. Comma is the left turn and period is the right. You'll need to hit the right key a few times going down the runway because on a propeller plane it pushes to the left because of torque on the prop. Okay, um, before we 
do that, um, I want to uh, explain that the um, cursor has to be selected. And the way you do that uh, to, to control the flight is you click once with the mouse and your cursor turns to a crosshair or a little plus sign. Make sure you keep it near the middle of the screen most of the time because if you move it far away from the middle, you'll fly rapidly in that direction. So keep it near the middle for is an, an important tip. Okay, so now that I've told you how, how to fly, uh, to get the throttle to go up, we hit the page up key to go up and the page down to go down on the throttle. Uh, if you hold it down, it'll rapidly go to full throttle. So that's what we'll do now. And I will hit the period key, like I said, to push us to the right and keep us going down the center of the runway. Move the cursor back in the middle of the screen to about the minus 10 degree angle. Once you're going fast enough, it will suddenly take off like that. Push it back down some to the center so that you don't climb too rapidly. All right, now the first important tip is if you hit the space bar, it pauses everything. So this way, if your things are going crazy, and you're not sure where you're at, hit the space bar and you have a chance to fix things. So um, just make sure if you hit the space bar again that you keep the cursor near the middle, otherwise you'll fly at a crazy angle again and cr probably crash. Although don't worry, you won't get hurt. So anyway, uh, while you're stopped, one way to look around is hit the hold down the control key and press the arrow key. So if I do the down arrow, I look down. If I hit the right, I turn to the right. So this is a way to look around. And to center your view, hit the V key to go back. The, the HUD appears when you're centered. Okay, so now uh, I put the cursor in the middle again and we'll resume flying. And I'm not gonna climb too high, uh, maybe between five and 800 feet above the ground uh, for this demonstration. Now an important tip is to move the cursor slightly to the left to tilt your and bank your airplane to the left. Once you've got it at the angle you want, move it back to the middle and it'll stop tilting. Move it to the right when you're tilt, turned as far as you want to go and tilt it to it levels off and then put it back to the center again. Also, if you don't want to keep climbing, you push it down until this little crosshair moves to the zero and then you'll be going level. Now I'm going to take off some throttle here so that we're not going too fast and I'm going to hit the space bar. Again, I want to have, point something out here. If you look at the city, it looks fantastic on Google Earth now because Google's new 3D buildings just look awesome, especially from the air because that's when the where the photos were originally taken. But Google has done a fantastic job of converting those photographs into 3D renderings. And it's not just the buildings, but you'll also notice that trees are rendered. Even if you go down closer, you can see the air conditioning units on buildings and even the cars and parking lots are rendered a bit in 3D. From the air, you have fantastic, accurate models of the way a city looks when they've been rendered in this way. In fact, if you are a flight simulator enthusiast like I am, you will be really impressed because most flight simulators have auto-generated 3D buildings and data, and so it's not anywhere near what you would see if you flew over the city. Whereas here in Google Earth, which is a free application, the city looks remarkably accurate. And in fact, here for Boston, the data was collected just about 18 months ago, and uh, so it's accurate up to 18 months ago. So. This is really awesome, and Google has done this for hundreds of cities around the world. In fact, on our blog, you'll find we have a map that will show you all the areas that Google has done 3D that we know about. Okay, so I'm going to center again, and we're going to keep flying here for a moment. And then once I've gotten far enough away, I'm going to turn around, and uh, we're going to return to the airport for a landing. And I'll give a few tips about how we do that. So I'm going to start turning, and we bank to the right, and then I pull back on the stick to more rapidly turn. And then I'll straighten out, 
and now I'm going to turn the throttle way down and I'm going to add flaps. In flaps you hit the F key and each time it incrementally increases the angle of the flaps and it will slow you down. Now I'm going to turn to the right because the runway is over there somewhere and I'm pretty close to straight down the runway and you just want to straighten yourself before you get to the runway you want to be going pretty accurately on the runway. Uh, my mouse uh, took control away from me there for a moment. We'll put full throttle, full flaps and off on the throttle now. And you want to be going less than a hundred uh, miles per hour or actually it's knots on the display in the upper left there before you land. And you don't want to be going less than 70 or you'll suddenly drop and land very hard or crash. And we try to approach the end of the runway and then when we get close we lift up the nose and then you have a landing and you hold down the two brake keys simultaneously and it slows you down and you stop and there you have it a little successful flight in the Google Earth flight simulator you too can do this Okay, now before we uh, stop here, I will hit the escape key to enter the flight simulator. And I'm going to just do a fun little flight with the jet just to show you what it's like. We're going to go to the Matterhorn in the Swiss Alps. And I'll start up the flight simulator. We'll hit F16. Say start. And I'll add lots of throttle and I'll turn off the head up display. And I'm going straight down here pretty much. So it's it's kind of a crazy view, but I want to get as much speed as possible quickly here. And I'll try not to make you too sick, but we're going to do kind of a crazy maneuver here. That's the Matterhorn on the, on the uh, right there. And now before I hit the ground, I'm going to go straight down this valley. And the the Swiss Alps is a particularly great way place to fly around, especially in the jet. And uh, you can fly down the valleys and over the peaks and swoop around, and the views are absolutely stupendous. Um, I've never been to the Swiss Alps myself, but I would love to go there because, especially if I had an airplane, uh, it would be a great way to view um, these beautiful mountains. So this is what it's like to fly in the flight simulator with the jet, much faster speeds, beautiful views. Um, there are many other beautiful places on the earth, of course, where you can fly. I highly recommend the Grand Canyon, and of course, pick your favorite city, and the bigger cities are usually rendered in 3D by Google, um, and you will have a delightful time with the Google Earth Flight Simulator. So um, I'll stop here and uh, just mention that if you go to the Google Earth blog and if you search for um, flight simulator tips uh, it'll bring you to this article and um, you will be able to see this was the original article that I had and I'll be updating this article with all the latest tips on how to fly the flight simulator and with links to more details. So hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial and have a great day.